Hey Saints, uh, tonight's topic that I'm going to talk about is going to be, well, it's going to be quite different. Even though it's similar in a way because I've spoken to you about demons before. Um, I had a few people contact me and they said that they knew somebody or there were people on YouTube doing these spells, uh, these spells, they were doing these spells, and um, the spells that they were doing was on how to become a werewolf or a vampire. Now, I never really talked to you about these types of spirits, maybe I, I touched on it a little bit. Um, they are very real. They exist. These demons that are vampiric demons, um, lycanthrope demons, they are spirits. They exist. They are real. They are fallen ones. I've done deliverance cases before where a person was afflicted with a vampiric spirit. Yes, their facial, facial features did change. And another one was afflicted with a lycanthrope spirit. Um, when you summon these demons, it could sometimes be an indirect, in an indirect way, um, indirect authority or direct authority. Authority meaning counterfeit to the, the Most High God's authority. When you command a demon to leave a person in Jesus' name, you can also do something in reverse where you can command a demon to come to a person or even come to you, thereby giving it full legal access. I've always told you that any sin can give a demon at least partial access and then they have to tempt you with whatever sin they represent to get full legal access to you and be the dominant lead demon or gateway demon or strongman as the Bible calls them. Now, if you do a spell, and this I've warned you about before, you will summon those demons. These demons are very particular. Um, a lot of demonic entities, when they are uh, summoned in a spell, they want the summoner to be experienced. They want them to be a very high-ranking individual in the occult. So, for example, a Sister of Light, which is a very high-ranking witch. Okay, um, this is what someone has disclosed to me because she used to be a witch. Her name is Barbara. I'm not going to give you her last name. She used to be a witch. She was very high-ranking and she came to Christ. Um, but she dealt with demons. A very high-ranking angel, one-on-one. -on -one. And um, most of these demons that are really high ranking want to deal with a person that is in the occult for years, that is very high ranking, that knows what they're doing. And these demons can tell if you are in the occult, if you are experienced, if you are drenched in sin, because that's what they feed off of. Um, evil cannot be in the presence of righteousness. So. If you, they can only be in the presence of evil, so if you are drenched in sin, these demons can sense that. They can also uh, sense um, if you are in fear of them. If you are high ranking in the occult and you summon a demon and they even sense one bit that uh, you're not confident in what you do, that you are not experienced, that you are afraid, that you have doubts, um, that could set the demon off, and ultimately, that demon can take your life if given permission by Satan. And again, this is what this young lady Barbara had explained to me, and it's true. I've noticed that I've seen it for myself, meaning I've dealt with a lot of uh, deliverance cases trying to free a person from a spirit of witchcraft. It's true, everything she said, okay? Um, 
When you do a spell, and I don't recommend it, this is why I'm in deliverance, okay? Because a lot of people don't know this, they don't understand this, and they mess with things they don't understand. When you do a spell, you are summoning a demon, and it could have it. It could have an effect on you either way. Uh, a few demons will not want to be bothered with you. If they see that you're not even high ranking, they won't even come. Lots of them will come. If they see that you're not a high ranking in the occult, okay, they will attach themselves to you anyway. They will torment you. Some of them may even take your life if you're not covered with the blood of the Lamb. To do that, they would ultimately have to get Satan's permission first. Because Satan is sin incarnate. And Satan probably wouldn't even have any problem giving that subordinate demon permission to slay the individual that summoned it. The individual that summons the demon again, if they're not high ranking, sometimes a high ranking demon, or they're not high ranking in the occult, sometimes a high ranking demon will stay behind and attach themselves to the individual's house torment that individual, break them down, and a lot of times even take them as a host. That's why it's dangerous to do spells. Um, when you do a spell, you are doing a binding contract with the demons. I've seen cases where people have done spells with demons in ignorance. They didn't know it was a sin. I kid you not. And they had to go to deliverance, uh, get baptized, born again, uh, water baptized, born again, confess their sins, repent of it, and go through the correction. Um, I've seen that. Bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, when you do a spell, it's a very dangerous business. You are summoning a demon to you, you're giving it full legal rights. And if you know what you're doing, that's blasphemy too. Because your soul is not yours to bargain with, I've warned you that before. You might be you, either way, you're bargaining with your soul. You're trading something for something. So if you do a vampire spell, you're trading your soul to become an immortal being. And they're not immortal because God can destroy them. God is Jesus Christ. Anyway, the reason why I'm giving this little background information is because there are actual people that are doing spells to become a werewolf or a vampire. Usually, high-ranking Satanists strive to become vampires or werewolves. When you become a werewolf or a vampire, and if they say you blaspheme God, that means the Holy Spirit leaves you. Your spirit, where the Holy Spirit used to reside, is swept clean, like the Bible says. And when it's swept clean, it'll bring in not only one demon, but usually seven more wicked of its own. Rest assured that your spirit, if you blaspheme God, a demon will take up residence in there and bring in subordinates, seven each of their own. In other words, for every sin you committed, every demon that, com that represents that sin, seven each will come and take up residence in you, but the dominant strong man will reside in your spirit. Um, People are enticed by werewolf spells, are enticed by vampiric spells. But you don't know what you're asking for. Anyway, uh, this person that contacted me, a few people contacted me, they said that there were some kids doing these types of spells. Kids, uh, I researched it too, they were, they were as young as five, I want to say, four or five, they were doing these spells. I'm going to tell you something about vampire demons and werewolves, and again, this is from experience of doing deliverance. They crave young bodies. They want young kids as hosts. So when a kid does a spell, and they know that nine times out of ten, well not nine times out of ten, some of the time, the kids are innocent. That's prime target that the demon can take advantage of. Or a kid might know that it's wrong to do that spell, but they do it anyway because they're so attempted and so lured by these spells. Ladies and gentlemen, the dark side can be very alluring and can be very tempting. It's very seductive and it could be dangerous and sensual. 
that's why the, that, that's the characteristics of Satan. Satan is a very tempting demon. He's very tempting. He even appears as a beautiful angel of light, but he's not. He's alluring. A lot of people succumb to him. Okay? Um, he could even have a lustful, seductive nature. A lot of people will be will fall for that false Christ appearance that he generates. A lot of people will fall for that false humility. But he's sin incarnate. He's prideful. She's in sin incarnate. Okay? So a lot of people, Satan represents darkness. A lot of people find the dark very alluring, very seductive. You're not bound to any rules. You're free to do what you want. But that's not the way it works. Because you are bound to rules except you have a choice to follow them or not. God has laws set in place from the Old and New Testament. And you have a choice to follow them or not. And you don't. There is a consequence. And these demons are not immortal because they can be destroyed. Immortal means when something can't die, it can't be destroyed. If it could be destroyed, it's not immortal. So you have these kids doing these spells and they don't know what they're doing. They're asking for something that they don't want. They're asking for something that they don't understand. Sure, you'll be fascinated by, oh, I'm going to be aware that yeah, they're going to be a werewolf or... They're going to exhibit, you know, they're going to be a vampire, they're going to exhibit this and that. When you do a werewolf or a vampiric spell, the side effects are sharper teeth, increased senses, increased height, increased agility, strength, speed. You do regenerate. Um, you will smell like a dead body, I'm not kidding. You will be more pale. You'll smell so furric. Your body will be unclean, an unclean vessel. You'll be more aggressive and you'll be less like yourself. That means that that demon, you're becoming conformed to it. If you have not blasphemed God, you can go through deliverance. But if you have blasphemed God, you're being conformed to that demon. And when the transformation is complete, meaning when the full possession is complete, that demon's going to be in control, not the person that made the spell. That person's not going to exist anymore. I've seen this happen, ladies and gentlemen, and it's not fun, it's not pretty. When you do these spells, you don't know what you're asking for. And there's kids doing these spells right now, even young adults. You're asking for a demon to inhabit your body where the Holy Spirit should reside. So I researched it, and I looked on YouTube, and I saw all these young kids doing these spells. And these are kids that live in different parts of the country. Some even live outside of the country. And for those, the spells that, for those who the spell was successful, meaning that the spell worked, the only way it could work is if they're not covered by the blood of the Lamb. They're not a sheep of God. God only protects the righteous. And what I noticed about all the cases that I looked at was that the symptoms that I'm telling you, they were exhibiting. You also uh, grow a set. Your teeth do change. They become sharper. Sometimes you'll grow extra canines. Um, your eye colors will change. I looked at all of these cases. These are kids that don't know each other. You can't sit here and allege that it's fake. I've looked at hundreds of these cases, and um, they all have the same symptoms. They're in a lot of trouble. They, they have sharper teeth, their eyes got this weird color. You know how when you are under a camera, and they say that the camera can sometimes catch things that you can't? It's true. If you take a picture of someone, sometimes you can catch, you can have, you can take a visual of that demon that's in them. Or when they're in front of a camera, you can see that demon when the picture's all distorted. You could just tell, you have to have discernment. But I've noticed that too. These kids are in trouble. They don't know what they're asking for. Technically, these demons have full rights. 
And lots of these kids, because I prayed to Jesus about it, from my understanding, they knew about the Lord and they knew what they were doing was wrong, which means that they committed a Hebrews 10.26, which is blasphemy, because it means if you commit a sin after having the knowledge of that sin, there is no sacrificial blood left to wash that sin away, and you're subject to judgment. I've warned you guys about doing spells. I'm not saying you personally, but those that are doing spells like this, I've warned you. When you do a spell, you are using a counterfeit authority to summon that demon to you, and you're giving it full legal rights. You're opening up your spirit, your mind, your body, your heart, your soul to this demon. You're giving it full legal rights. You are forming a pact. When you form a pact with these demons, you're putting your soul on the bargaining table. And your soul is not yours to bargain with because Jesus Christ brought your soul with his blood. So, I mean, like I said, I've had people contact me about this and tell me, you know, you believe that there's kids actually doing spells where they're summoning demons. They're doing spells to become werewolves and vampires. Other people are doing spells to become mermaids. Mermaids are cannibalistic spirits. I'm not even going to get into that. But they're also a type of siren. They're a water spirit, a type of sex spirit. You guys are, you know, those that are doing this, you're messing with stuff you don't understand. I had, I was looking at one testimony where this girl was saying that she was proud of her fangs and this and that. And I'm thinking, well, she's doing something she doesn't understand. These people think that they're going to be themselves. If they're going to be in control of these demons, but they're not. That demon is going to be running the show. That demon is going to be controlling everything. When that demon takes full possession, the host will no longer be there. They will no longer cease to exist. Let me correct that. They will no longer exist. That demon is going to take up full residence. So yeah, you might have your strength and stuff like that, but it's not going to be you controlling and control. It's going to be the demon in full control. And that demon is not going to let that host go. You know, there are, if the person has not blasphemed the most high, there are situations where a demon can actually resist prayer. Because the way that the, the demon sees it is that it has fair game, fair claim on that soul because that soul did the spell. You don't know what you're messing with, and you certainly don't understand. So if you are thinking of making a spell, because you won't want, you don't want to die, you want to be a, a vampire, or you want to be a mermaid, or you want to be a werewolf, you need to think again, because what you're losing is far too great from what you're going to get on it. You're losing Jesus Christ, and on top of that, you're going to end up in hell. I mean... There's no way out of that. And not only that, you're going to, like I said, you're going to end up in hell. Everything has an appointed time to die. Demons are not immortal. They even have an appointed time to die too. There's a season for everything. So if you're lured by immortality, you want to live forever, if you want eternal life, the real eternal life is Jesus Christ. But messing with the dark and you don't understand what you're dealing with is something you don't want to do. I know a lot about demons, and I know how dangerous they are. I know about what makes them tick, their counterfeit authority, how they can call out sin, how they will resist prayer. When I say call out sin, I had a situation when I was doing a deliverance where I tried to call out a uh, past sin from the victim, even from me, sins that were already confessed and repented for. When you are messing with a demon, you're messing with dangerous territory. Don't do any spells. Don't be tempted. Don't let Satan steal your light or your crown. It's not worth it. Your soul is something that you will lose, and that's just too great a risk because it's not worth what you're going to get in return. Because when Christ comes back and He does, 
He's destroying all demons, including those that were stupid enough to do a spell like that. These kids that are doing these spells do not know what they're doing, what they're messing with. But they're going to find out soon enough. And then they're going to cry out for help. And when they cry out for help, it's going to be too late. The help that they're looking for, which would be the Lord, is not going to be there. 